it's just one day of that. It's just a one day of that. Um, and then uh, the other one is that uh, we have sign-in sheets over here, so it's either now or after you can sign in. Today, we have two graduates that are going to be speaking to you guys, Marco Fulman and Jonathan Castro. We're going to be talking to you guys about content creation. So, it's important that you guys start taking a look at Ad Week, Ad Age, the different kind of articles that are coming out. And what you're going to see is that the ad industry is changing dramatically. So that's a good thing. You know, change is good. But it's like, what's it changing to is the kind of the question. So definitely content creation is one of the things that you guys have to start making more of. So in the past, it's just been like writing ads for ideas for when you came up with ideas, and ideas were enough. And ideas are still very important. You know, like for future lines, it's in a world show about ideas. Um, but you do have to start making more of the things that you're coming up with. Case studies are still important for award shows. Most of the award shows are asking for case studies. But for a brand, like I was just speaking to Joe from Nike. He was here this weekend working with the social strategist. Nike and their in-house agency and with their agencies, RGA and AKQA and others, it's about storytelling. So they create these personas and they develop stories around them. And that's how they kind of brief each other is through storytelling. And so it's just those types of things that I'm asking you guys to look for when you're reading these articles about how the industry is changing. Because ultimately, because of your age and where you're coming in as juniors, everyone's gonna just look at you for the answer. You know, you guys know how to do social media because you're millennials, right? So no, you know, you have to learn it and, and, and practice, so. Anyway, I want to introduce you guys to Miami Ad School graduates, Marco Furman, Jonathan Castro, and they're going to talk to you tonight about content creation. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. How's everyone doing? I'm Marco. Graduate from Miami Ad School. I'm Jonathan. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Who, everyone here attends school? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Am I speaking to this? Does everyone here attend the school? Yeah. And what's the ratio of, of art director, copywriter, designer, photographer? What's the ratio here? Uh, let me see, show of hands, copywriters. Art right. directors? Let me see those art directors up. Art directors? Yep. Photography, digital, digital design. Any strategists? Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Cool, man. All right, and how do you guys like the experience so far? The school. What quarters are we here? Is this a range of all the quarters? A mix? Or a mix. yeah. How many first quarter students here? And how many close to last quarter students here? Okay. The rest of you guys are in the heat of it. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm Marco again, Jonathan. We uh, blank index is an idea, which Ralph thwarted me. Part of my thing is I didn't want to be found any way, any shape, or form online. He dug up an, enough information. That's for a reason. It's part of my brand. Um, we came today to show you guys some of the things we've been doing for in the beginning, but most of the conversation is going to be about how you guys can fit yourselves into the ad industry moving forward as it's evolving and changing, right? Let's try to just see where your heads are at and where you want to be in the future. Um, any questions before we start? Okay, so before anything, content's changing every single day. Um, so I'm actually just put a piece. Yeah, we're gonna start right away, just get you guys into it. Coma, mierda. 
coma mierda. Pronounced coma mierda. Coma mierda. Coma mierda. Coma mierda. Right, so right away, I saw some smiles and some gestures, right? So we can all agree probably that that could turn into good content, right? Like you want to see more, okay? So what does, how did you decide that's good content? Is it because of the shock of the curse? Is it because of the star quality of the actor or the show? What made you decide as soon as you saw, oh, shit, I want to see this? Besides it being Narcos, right? What made you right away have a reaction? And it's the story behind it, right? You, oh. it re thank you. It's relatable, right? Narcos is the shit right now, right? It's the show. It's relatable. You immediately it got your attention, right? It's relevant, right, to what's happening. Um, does it leave you wanting to see more? Right? So right there, that's it. That's how you create content. Your five-minute audition, successful, right? So as soon as you produce a piece of content, as creatives, which I, I dropped the title copywriter. He hasn't dropped the title art director, which a lot of you guys have a problem, you art directors, but the creative, a creative is a creative, right? As a creative, we're trying to create things that we want to see. When we get hit with a brief or a job from an agency, whether it's freelance or whatever, we read the brief and we say, is it relevant to us, number one? If it is, what do we want to see? If it's not relevant to us, we're going to go find who it's relevant to. We're going to find out what they want to see here or, you know, talk about, right? Go ahead. And more importantly, with that piece in that campaign, um, I got to work actually as an editor on that project. Um, and when the creators were coming up with the concepts and I was, you know, assisting them through the editorial process as well, uh, one of the biggest things was how do, we, how do we make Narcos? It's so cool already. How do we create a campaign that can still be side by side to it and be equally as cool? It's hard when you have something that's already super creative, super out there, something like Narcos, right? Um, so how do you actually break through and kind of come up with a really badass idea? Um, and being able to use Spanish lessons, right, inside of it just completely makes sense. Um, sometimes as a creative, uh, we overthink things, um, and it's really the simplest of things that uh, really break through. And it's not necessarily the first idea, but it's the simplest idea. Right. Um, sometimes that's just what clicks. So, as you guys are saying at this point, who the hell are we, right? Okay. So that's kind of the point. The idea of blank index is I've always been the type of person who like to be behind the curtain. I basically give away my ideas. I just want to see them produced. He's always been a person who can follow through and actually complete something. One of the hardest things you guys are going to do as students is take an idea from zero to something tangible, something that's real. And so if you work for an agency, tangible to them means ROI, right, and the return on investment. To me, tangible is something real, something that gets a reaction, something that we can reproduce and reproduce. We can reproduce this Narcos thing over and over. We can go to other TV shows and reproduce it over and over and over and make it relevant to any community we want, right? In, in terms of, like, the storytelling of it, you know, you still stick with, let's say, the brand archetypes and you right. still stick with its personality traits. But the idea of what kind of Marco is saying is that we could break that down completely and transform it every single time to whatever brand it is. So the good thing about that is that content nowadays, it's now, it's today, it's at this moment. And since it's like that, you need to be able to replicate it numerous amount of times. And how do you actually do that? Um, that's the formula. That's, that's the secret. That's the formula. That it's, it's not a unique singular formula for everything. Each thing, each project, each job is going to have a formula. Your job as creatives, again, not copywriters or art directors, designers, as creatives is to come up with that formula. Test it, execute it, reproduce it over, 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 over. Okay? That's, in a nutshell, what we're going to try to talk about today. Go ahead. All right, we're going to show you some of John's reel. This is cool. Tears from falling. If you actually look through a lot of these pieces of content, a lot of them is social, right? So if you saw the 
State Farm ones, that's something that we shot five videos within one day. Um, how do you actually go ahead and do that, right? Uh, you have to come in with the process of exactly what the storyboard is. You have to understand what you're shooting beforehand um, in a pre-production standpoint. As an art director and as a copywriter, uh, you need to know what you're asking for. You need to know what you're telling and, and how is the story being portrayed every single time uh, uniquely. Um, and you need to just be able to do that because if you get on the set and you're trying to figure things out and you see that a lot of times in, uh, in agencies nowadays, you have your art director, you have your copywriter arguing about what shot they're going to be taking on set. Um, and a lot of times it, it, it slows down productivity. Um, you don't get the things you want to get out of it because there are parts that need to be in the pre-production process. Who's ever been part of a storyboard here in making a storyboard? Have any of you guys done that to completion and then had it produced? Was it produced exactly as you imagined? Did you find where the mistake went? And, and right. And that's the problem. That's the problem, right? Because as a creative, you need to know what are, what you need to do in order to get exactly what you want to get. Right. There right? has to be a relationship. The, you have tons of times, right, that you're going to have a commercial, an idea that you want to do, right? And a lot of times ideas sometimes don't get through the breakthrough because you, as a creative, you come up with this amazing, spectacular idea, but then guess what? Reality hits. Um, the producer tells you there's no budget. There's no budget. Or the strategist tells you you're totally off target. So what the heck do you do now? The strategist, <laughs> how many of you guys here? Show of hands. How involved are you guys with your copywriters and art directors before producing content? Are you involved at all? Do you give them your strategy before they go produce? Who gets the brief first, you or them? You get it, and then you take the brief and? You take the brief and? Give it to your What team, do you guys right? do with the brief? <laughs> Strategist, what do you do with the brief that you get? You do some research, yeah? And then you give it to your creatives. And then how many times, if that has ever happened, that you guys take a strategy, give it to your creative, do you get a result that you're expecting? Half, never, some, always? Hmm? Okay, so th that's, that's the issue that we, uh, kind of fighting, have figured out. And that's why we work well together, right? And that's kind of what we're trying to get to you guys today is that process. Let's talk about that process. Um, ideation. So, w first off, what do we actually do, right? Like me and Marco, uh, what Marco do we actually do, right? Marco and I, sorry, copywriter here, right? So what do we actually do? Uh, we create ideas, uh, like as any creative, right? And it could be towards any form, towards any medium, actually. Um, you know, it, it, depending, it could be a personal project, it could be an installation piece. You've done plays. You know, it, it, Exactly. We did a play. It's circulating in New York right now. I mean, it, it, don't limit yourself to what, how you're delivering the creativity, right? Sometimes an infographic, it, me and I, we did a FedEx job that I was insistent, I was insistent that I fought him on it on video. And it turned out he was right. Infographic was what was best, right? The strategist told him that. I went against it. But we're trying to come here today to see how we can get you guys to understand this. Because the advertising industry, the needs are different from what it's being delivered. It's changing rapidly. It's about content, content, content. So how do, how do you deliver content that's relevant, usable, reusable, and gets impressions and delivers what they want is money, ROI, right? That's, the, that's where everyone gets lost in the mix. And then in terms of creative production, it's actually the production process of creating, right? So you're coming up with these ideas with an insight, rationale, and a strategy, but then, okay, a lot of times as students, you're stuck with this thing just on paper or, or a keynote. It's, okay, let's go shoot this or let's go make this. And a lot of times it's how do you actually make it come to life? So it's, it's being able to understand what it comes down to, right? So besides your storyboard, besides a treatment, before, before all these little things that you need to do, right? How do you actually make sure that you're going through that process, right? Uh, because if you're not going through it, then you're not creating. You're not becoming innovative, yeah. which is the other pers perspective of what we actually do. Which is, well, yeah, and I'll bring this up really quick. The shit content out there, which is 99.9% .9 of it, is what makes the relevant content shine, right? And the people in this room should be the ones making the relevant content and the rest of the world making the things that makes yours look like spectacular. 
That's like, the way it should be. Like, right? think about when you go on Instagram, on your Instagram story, when you're swiping through, how many of your friends are actually posting pictures of what they ate for lunch, right? That's content. That is still content. content it's counted right? as content by the algorithm, right? So what's delivered to you that you decide that's fresh or cool? or How do you decide? Who made it? Where did it come from? How did it get to your... your who, has anybody had a class with Carlos from Cajolo? You got it? So he explains that. The algorithms, the numbers behind it, right? How the content is delivered to your particular screen. There's this incredible math that goes behind it. But it, even before the math, it starts with the, uh, the need, the strategy, the idea, the production quality, which he's going to get into. It's incredible what goes behind it. And then the next phase of this is that you guys got to figure out how to do that shit quick. Like now, like I get the brief this morning and by this afternoon, Zimmerman has the capacity. And, Where is that? And They'll get a brief at 8 a.m. And by 4, there's content with a website or whatever you need. Now, and how do you do it innovatively, right? How do you actually create pieces like this uh, that actually break through, through the market? You know, that's the, the key to it. Sometimes you're going to have a lot of cookie cutter pieces, but as a creative, you have to understand, okay, so how can I make this cookie cutter, but at the same time, make the shit badass, right? And that's, what you, that's how you have to start thinking about it. So you guys might be familiar with this, actually. Yeah, you guys will be familiar with this campaign. Should be. Familiar? This artist actually, um, we found him um, at a Dalma agency. And um, the coolest thing about this building actually, um, we had one week to produce this. Besides also obviously the installation that was made before previously. Then the installation took us about eight weeks or so. Um, and the thing was Sprint needed it out right away. Um, they just got tight on budgets. They're just like, we need this out right now. and. We had to find a location that we can actually put this installation piece that was either public or private, but that gives you one week to actually put this out. So we had Monday, we had to put this on on Friday. Um, the problem with this is that uh, usually in permits in Miami takes about 90 days to process with the city. So how do you actually produce that within one week, right? Uh, so pretty much it's, this is how you produce an idea. You have to get in contact with the buildings. You have to find out what buildings. It was call after call after call after call um, until I finally got through to the location manager. Uh, pretty much hustled the price to get the emoji there. And on Friday, we showed up with the truck and dropped it off. Um, that's how you put an idea to life. Uh, because if, if that process wouldn't have gotten done, um, we wouldn't have had a project at all. Um, budgets were getting tight and they were about to cancel the whole entire thing. Uh, the creatives um, at this point, um, they were pretty much begging us to figure something out. Uh, this was a project that got shortlisted in cons. Um, so it, it actually ended up being a powerful idea after all, you know? He, played, he, he wore many hats for this project. You were producer, location scout, what else? How many hats did you wear for this? Uh, this is what you, what you should tell them. I wore two hats really for this one. Okay. Two hats. Did you just stop talking? No, it's fine. We'll just keep going. All right. So what's the process? Um, you guys know how to story map? How to, who knows what story mapping is? Who knows how to make a story, how to make a character, a story, make it come to life? Where do you start? Anybody have an idea? No one? Copyright should have this one right now. Show me copyrights. How many copyrights here? How, all right, let's start like this. Um, name a superhero. Name some good traits about a superhero. All right, give me two traits about Black Panther to stick out. Okay. Uh huh. Give me two traits that other superheroes don't have about Black Panther to stick out. Let me say that. Money. Technology. Technology. Okay. So, could you create a story right now for Black Panther? Who, you're a copywriter? You a copywriter? <laughs> Could a copywriter create a story right now before this presentation is over, continue Black Panther's journey without coming out of his archetype, out of his stereotype, out of his... Out of his character. Right. Can that happen now, today, within 45 minutes? Who can do it? Take it give it a shot. Or maybe 
two copywriters together. Maybe by tomorrow, submit it to Jared and email it to him. Because that's what it takes. That's what it takes for you to be able to grab a brand's identity, the need, and fulfill it all without getting out of line within budget in the timeline and all the production commitments that have to happen, right? And then you're competing with, like I said, everyone else in the world that is posting every 2,000 posts per second, I think it is, something crazy, something like that's going up offline right now, right? That's what you guys' job is. That's what your job is going to entail. Yeah, you guys got to understand something. In terms of, like, minimum budgets for an agency nowadays, right, for a simple social video that just goes online, right, something that's like a tasty video, they're probably charging the client about forty to $50,000, right? As a creative, though, how much do you actually have the chance to be able to push that out into, right? Uh, there's not much budget, actually. As big yeah. as that number sounds, sounds like a lot. Not right? A lot. There's not a lot of budget. There's pretty much almost bare to none. You're talking about maybe one director, one DP, maybe two lighting guys, and that's about it. Um, going out to go shoot this, and that might be too big of a team, right? And then you have your art director and your copywriter that has to has to play the role also of a director because the director you're most likely getting at the time is not, you know, uh, you know, you're not talking about Tim Burton, you're not talking about James Cameron or anything. You're talking about, you know, it's probably some guy that just came out of college. Um, so what you have to do is you have to understand that if you're creating these pieces. You know, what's the whole story that you're trying to tell? Can it be continued? A exactly. Is it relevant, even? Like, it, who wants to see this shit? That's the first question. You know, and then you, hopefully your strategist answered that for you, right? And you don't have to think too much, right? Um, okay. What are we going to... Okay. Go to so, production. Go down, go over that in detail with them. So, we'll actually... This is kind of like the story map of it. So you yeah. obviously have your engagement, you have your research, you have your strategy, and you develop the brief. Let's say, let's just keep it really simple. Accounts and strategy, that's the first line. Second line is creative team, right? And the third line is production team, right? So if you have that, you, if you go ahead and let's say idea comes alive and it gets into planning, right? And this is where as a creative, a lot of times, uh, it kind of just goes and just crashes and burns, right? Um, especially as students you have to understand what that planning process is, right? So what, let me ask you guys, does anybody in here know what a treatment is? Treatment, you know what a treatment is, yeah. A treatment, like, like for a video or. What is a treatment? Right, a director's treatment, right. Okay, so in a director's treatment, you're gonna have the look, you're gonna have the field, you're gonna have what the film is about. You might have pull outs from different uh, cut downs and breakdowns from other uh, commercials and things like that, kind of like a mood board, but it's like right. a mood film, right? So you understand this so that when you decide, to, okay, you're like, oh, whoa, this is a really cool shot. I want to implement this same shot in my storyboard. It makes it easier for your process to kind of make your storyboard now, right? This is the process that a lot of times the creatives, they lack on because right. they don't know that this exists. Which is probably where you failed in the project. Right. right? That, that process wasn't done properly. Has anybody have been worked at an agency or interned at an agency yet? No one? If you guys notice at an agency, the, the strategy team and the accounts team would be very far from the creatives. If not, they'll just kill each other. Right? Usually there's a liaison that grabs the information that these people have and brings it to the creatives and has to deliver very delicately and carefully because they're very sensitive, the creatives. You know, they, they get hurt very easy. Right? <laughs> It's true. So, <laughs> kind of like babies, guys. <laughs> right, but, but you guys have to learn to keep that balance because the information they give you are guidelines. It's not to hurt you or make your job harder. It's to get a job done. At the end of the day, whoever is putting up money to do what you do wants to see a return plus X, right? And if you don't deliver that, someone's not doing their job. So it's very important that you guys understand and not, not really hate on them. They're not trying to kill your idea. They're not trying to tell your idea sucks. They're trying to tell you, find another route. There's always a way. I'm telling you right now, there's always a way. We've been on jobs. Yeah, we fist fought a few times, actually. <laughs> now, I'm not saying to be funny. We actually fist fought him and I in a niche because we weren't processing the information we thought was there to, for some reason, we thought it was not helping us. It was actually there to help us. When we took a different perspective, we said, wait a minute. And then the job came through better than we expected. Right? So now that you guys are working as students, you're not going to see that because you have creative freedom. You can, you can literally imagine what you want, and you have this imaginary budget that you can get it done. But when you hit an agency, especially like a boutique agency that gets smaller budgets, 
it hits you hard in the face. And then the, the, the career kind of loses its luster, right? It's like, shit, I don't want to do this anymore. But, you know, we're here to tell you guys just to stay at it because it gets really cool after a while, right? So then, obviously, one of the biggest things that kind of help you out as a creative is building a sense of emotion of whoever's viewing this, right? Um, and whatever you do, whether it's an art piece or, you know, uh, whatever, a film, you want to build some type of emotion in what you do, right? For example, in that Narcos piece, you guys laughed, right? Hope, I hope most of you laughed, right? Um, and you want to build that emotion because that's what's going to help you uh, get more engagement, what's going to build a retention of to continue putting out pieces like that and continue putting out content. My name is Charles Blackburn and I'm from Connecticut, small town, Waterford, Connecticut. My drug addiction took off and I left Connecticut and I came to New York just to get lost in the millions of people because I, I felt very hopeless about my life. I walk every day thinking about that. Every single day I walk, I walk for miles. I walk from I walk to Queens, I walk to Brooklyn, I walk everywhere just thinking about how am I gonna get out of this? I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get out of this. It sucks. When I put the water in the cup holder and I went to sleep and when I woke up, it was frozen solid. That's how cold it was outside. And I remember every time I had to lie down and go to sleep, I prayed and asked God not to let me freeze to death. school I played um, sports, did very well and excelled in sports and made good grades and was very likable with the um, teachers and everything so I enjoyed my childhood there and had big dreams of maybe someday playing for the Yankees. Yeah. Okay, so this project actually right here, when we first presented this at the agency, I was at uh, Ogilvy, New York at the time. Uh, they originally told us that there was no client for this. This was a proactive idea. Um, so me and three other people, uh, we contacted Make Them Visible uh, through our personal emails actually. And uh, we reached out to them asking if we could present them something. We went over there, we presented the whole project to them and they gave us the actual budget to be able to produce this. When we produced this campaign, we produced this separately without Ogilvy. Uh, we actually later on showcased this to Ogilvy and they actually started using this and all of their social platforms, they actually started using this campaign um, for themselves. So Ogilvy actually took this project up after we decided to produce it. So, so guys, that, that, no. it's not a usual thing that happens. It's not usual that happens that way. Um, and sometimes it's not gonna happen that way, but you wanna do whatever you can do to produce an idea if you feel that it's a good idea, right? And this basically started, if you guys get it in a nutshell, what he's saying, this was a rejected idea that he didn't give up on, right? He storyboarded, he found ideas, he found strategy, he did all the whole entire process and presented it in a way that then it was accepted, you see? It was, what he's trying to show you by this is that even when something is no, if you really wanna do it, if you really are invested in emotionally, it becomes a yes, right? You just can't give up on it. Someone says no through here, there's another way. There's always going to be another way. If, if you, always going to be If you way. feel it really deep down that it's a good idea, sometimes those are the ideas that we're meant to push through and break through. Yeah. 
you know? Never abandon it. Don't put it in your back pocket. Save it for another product. Do something. Never abandon the ideas that you are invested in, especially emotionally. Because if they move you in a certain way, they're going to move other people, you know? And if, and if you feel that you can't execute it at that time, maybe it's not now. Maybe yeah. it's in three years now or five. But you write it down in a little booklet and you save those ideas, yeah. right? This helps you produce more ideas later on in the future. And you could go back onto a – if you see there's a brief that's really similar to what you had last time, guess what? You have that written down. Now you could go back to it and you can start from there. Thanks so much. Let's show the results from uh... – all right, so here, here's how you guys – when you produce a piece that's good, your agency or who – you guys by yourselves, who uses Nuvi or Mintel or any of the reporting? Anybody uses – you guys use data, right? What data you strategists use? What data companies are you guys using? Huh? Nielsen, okay. Yeah, it does better. All right, guys, get on Nuvi. Get on Mintel. Start learning. There's amazing data. You guys see that Cambridge shit with Facebook, right? There's data companies out there that know, like, everything, right? Find them. You need them. Everything is data-driven right now. I do not make a move without data. Not anymore. I used to. I used to go off intuition, off my emotion, off my sentiment. I know better now. If you guys, especially you strategists, also copy, or even art directors, like all of you guys should be using data. After the Narcos piece, look at the results. Data proves it, right? Go Mintel, Nuvi, N-U-V-I, Nuvi, there's tons. Th those are my two favorite. Um, for a cheap, for a cheap, yeah, they're, they're for a cheap option, for a really cheap option, um, if you're just doing one Instagram account, you could do Iconosquare. Square. Icono Square. My favorite is Nuvi. If you guys don't know about Nuvi, look, Nuvi's so cool. They come, they, the school has a good relationship with them. You guys can actually call them, and they can, they can give you, like, a trial. The, the way they present the data and the amount of data they give you, it's really impressive. All right, now, digital, all your digital data, whatever you want, whatever you're looking for, especially, like, Mintel. If you get your hands on a Mintel report for, for a particular... No, they on have like steroids. yeah on steroids. It's like heat yeah. maps. It's like dick it. Like if you follow a hashtag, it'll show you where the hashtag actually started. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Th there's, it's it's impressive. It's really really impressive, especially with things like uh, if you guys are huge on the Instagram, right? Which I think you should be. Nuvi is powerful because it allows you to control sentiment. Literally, how to control sentiment. You can see where your negative sentiment is. You can see if John posts something and she doesn't like John. You can see that on Nuvi, and you can possibly change her mind somewhere. And if she influences a lot of people, guess what? It benefits John. You see, th that's the power that these companies give you, you know. So you guys should really take advantage. And since you're students and you have your student email, that's all it takes. Because they need you the same way you need them, and they understand that. So they'll do business with you, okay? Yo soy Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. <laughs> Plata o plomo, hijo de puta. Mal parido. Plata, plata, hijo de puta. Toma, mierda. Toma, toma, mierda. Patrón, patrón, patrón. Mal parido. Hijo de puta. Plata o plomo. Es mi plata o no es mi plata. Es mi berraco. Toma, mierda. Coma, mierda. Pronounced. Como mierda. Como mierda. Como mierda. Como mierda. Maricadas. Hágale. Malditos malparidos. Es something pretty common in Spanish. Mal parido. Mal parido. Mal parido. Mal parido. Mal parido. Mal Hijo de puta. 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 Hijo de 
siento que soy muy berraco. Como mierda. Yeah, in a nutshell, like that that's the greatest piece of work we have to show because say again? It was a group of us. A group of people came up with it. Never two people. It's strategists first. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people involved. There's editors. You have to. You have. You can't say it's. And you guys, it'll never be just your idea. It, it's, it's always either a recycled idea. It's usually the result of a bad idea, right? Which is another thing that I have a lot of a lot of students that they ask me, which I want to bring up today. I don't know if now's the time. A lot of students ask me, tell me that they're shy to talk about when they have an idea, when you guys are in group discussions, brainstorming, right? And I say, that's absolutely when you need to blurt out whatever's on your mind, as ridiculous, as stupid as you think it sounds, it's gonna spark another idea. If you, if you guys have a brief in front of you and you have an idea and you're not sure about it, that's exactly the reason why you have to say it and mention it and say it out loud and share it with your group. And then your, the responsibility of your group is to not knock down your idea. It's to take something from it. There's always something good in the idea, right? And that's how these ideas are born. You get it? Like to get the approval of come mierda, hijo de puta, of all these curse per you know what it took? It had to be such a strong idea that everyone wanted to overlook that. Right? Because now we're cursing all over the world, right? And that's what's really happening. Okay, so the idea was so strong that they say, oh yeah, it's cool, it's still cool. So, you know, that, that, that's something I wanted to bring up today, because I don't know, when we were students, it happened a lot, a lot. I remember me as a copywriter, uh, especially my early quarters, I wouldn't say what was on my mind. And then I would kick myself in the ass while the groups were presenting and I would see my same exact fucking idea, someone else presenting it, and then everyone clapping, right? I don't know if it's happening to you guys here, but it happened to me many times. And then what I know now that I didn't know back then is I should have just spoke, you know, I should have spoken up because one idea leads to another, to another, to another. This started with a very bad idea that was pushed for about four days. For example, this, this actually happened with uh, the head of digital of Alma, he had relationships with Narcos from before, from his old job, because he was on Facebook, brought in the account um, and told them pretty much, let's try to do something cool for you guys, give us a chance. Um, the creative team uh, took the brief uh, from the strategies and they came up with this concept, uh, but this all had to be produced in-house. Um, so this was actually a group effort from Alma, from the majority of people that work there. Um, it wasn't just one hat that we played, you know, I, for example, on, on this job here, I played editorial, um, and I actually Writer. helped as a producer, um, you know, everybody was up there numerous times till really late because we all believed in the idea, and that's what happens. When you have something good, more people are going to want to jump on top of it, and it's not, uh, one of the biggest things about, you know, coming to Miami Ad School, um, we had people even in our quarter, right? I think it was in our court, right? Mm -hmm. that, that that pretty much you know they steal your ideas sometimes, right? Oh yeah. And I, and that's gonna happen in the oh, industry, oh. And, and ideas are gonna get recycled, right? But when you have something that you believe in, it's more about let's join together and let's make something really cool and badass. Let's 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 really make something work and let's try to uh, get recognized for this. You, um, you guys can all produce something like this. Like yeah, he's a big. If anyone knows half a social media influencer, you could grab them put them to the strategist, have the strategist find out what their position is, what their brand position is, and come up with a strategy, come up with a campaign and shoot it. And you will be just, just as recognized, maybe even more, if you have the right influencer, right? Don't let it stop you, Don't, because things like this just get you noticed more and more and more than people want to work with you. When, when you're going to them, it's one thing. When they come to you, it is a totally different conversation. When he and I, we closed our first deal in the back of the, the old Miami Ad School in Ralph's office. Ralph's office was in the back, and he had a bathroom. He and I used that as an office, and we begged to close a deal. This was our second quarter. And I remember that. I was talking that to him yesterday. I'm like, now we're turning down. A Miami Beach, right? Yeah. Now we're turning down those type of deals. Now they're begging us. The budget's not big enough. Like, I'm sorry. Like, that's, that's to say that to someone in this short time, it's kind of asshole-ish, but, you know, it's like, hey, I just don't have the time. You see? And it started like that. It started with an idea, balls in a room, hiding from Ralph. If he would have caught us, we got in trouble. I'm holding the door, he's on the phone, I'm like, shh, you know, just literally, just doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. But the point is, nothing stopped us, right? We had a teacher that was a strategist, we saw him on the side, he blessed us with a strategy, 
We took it, we developed it, he made the storyboard. We went, we borrowed cameras, we did what we had to do. You know, maybe you guys have more that, access now. Than that's me. the truth on how ideas come to life. It's, it's not as pretty as, as everyone thinks sometimes, no. right? It's uh, nitty gritty. You know, one of the things that uh, as, as creatives, and you see it a lot of times from the producer's end, that they come up with something amazing, it's a great idea, and all of a sudden it has to stop there because they don't know who can produce this. Mm. And this is the problem as a producer. Uh, you're not dealing with just one amazing project. There's a hundred amazing projects. Right. So for someone to just stop and think that they're going to pay attention to only that, it might not get to that, especially if it's a really hard idea to produce. Yeah. So as a creative, you need to have your references. You need to be like, hey, look, I found this company. I haven't talked to them, but I know that this is a company that might be able to do it. And if they say, look, we reached out to them, they can't do it, you need to continue fighting it through because a lot of ideas don't get produced like that. The ice cream. Tell them about the ice cream. Well, even before that, I, I, I remember there was this one idea that never got produced. It was amazing, actually. It was an application that was connected to your phone. It was for parent, for parent control when uh, teenagers first drive their car. And they were able to unlock the whole system directly through their phone, and they were able to see the car move and everything like that, and see where it was parked, and Te see how much time, te everything, everything. And the only way the car can start was if they put their seatbelt on, and the alert will go off to their phone, and they'll be able to push start the car. It didn't get produced. It didn't get produced because back then what happened was it was very hard to find a company that can do all that. Now there's like right here in Winwood you find them. It's and, right across the street you'll find them. the thing with that was is just when you have something like that, you can't give up because that idea later on got produced and I don't know how made how many millions of dollars. Yeah. But you have to continue pushing forward on it. I'll tell you guys a story. Of, well, I'll tell you after. The story of the ice cream, remind me. That, that, that might motivate you guys in a different way. What do we have here? Okay, why creativity works. Um, spending on experiences and household necessities a percent. All right, this is boring, right? <laughs> Go to the next one. You guys know why creative. Do, do, do you guys want to have a conversation on the benefits of having a creative available to you? Do you guys understand how a company sees you as an asset? Do you guys understand your value? What, you bring, what do you think you bring to, to an organization? What would you bring to... Um, Nike's in-house creative team. They have, they outsource creative, but they have their inside team. What, what would you bring to the table? What do you think you would bring as a copywriter? Yeah, I could get fresh ideas from a four-year-old. I need more. What do you bring to the table if I'm Nike and I say I want you in my creative team? What are you bringing me? Huh? Money. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. No. No. This is what you guys bring to the table everywhere you go, okay? And learn this from this moment. Go ahead. Insights, powerful, okay? Fresh insights, right? Relevant insights to the community that they cater to. You understand? What you guys bring to your table is your brand, who you are, okay? That's what you offer. That's all, that's all you're going to be. When you walk in, if, if I am called tonight, I'm a good example. I have a leg that doesn't work, right? If I go to Nike, this is what I offer you, Nike. I offer you to make footwear for people with my leg problem. That's all I offer you, right? And if you want to make money of that, we could go. If not, I, I can go. You see? I'm not going to go tell them I can offer you insights on runners. I, I can't run anymore, right? You guys just be honest with yourself first and say, what do I, this is what I bring to you guys. I have a fresh perspective on sneakers or the technology of fabrics, and, you and see, or colors. Like if you're a really good art director, like you understand colorways. You got to understand who you are first before you go somewhere. And then that's going to help you out with finding the right agency and the right fit. Yeah. Um, because then you're gonna enjoy what you actually do. Who, you know? who knows about agency culture? Tell me, what's your favorite agency? Why? Young, they're, they're, playing, they're talking to the youth, right? Okay, so you, you, you want to stay there. So then you obviously, in your head, want to stay surrounded to what's relevant to the young people if you're going to offer this JWT, right? He's at Zimmerman, which every day baffles me. It's a retail agency. The retail industry every day is dying, is bleeding money. 
how the fuck is Macy's still open? It's his company keeping it open. So they like the challenge. They're a bunch of nut jobs that just, you know, they want to go against Amazon, basically. I don't know what they want to do. Their motto is 24-7 liturgy. So when you think about that, it's how many pieces of content we actually produce in a given week, actually. Volume. Uh, you're talking about maybe over 150 pieces of content, 300 pieces of content so th- in one week. You guys got to think, think, think about the and challenge the agency changes, faces. Who buys clothes online? Who buys clothes online? Who, everybody, you probably all buy clothes online. The agency he works for has to try to convince you to go walk to a store to buy the clothes rather than online. Think of the challenge there. Think of how, like, I would be scared to wake up and go to work every day that my job won't be there if I work there, right? So that's what motivates him to work there. You guys learn agency culture because you may land at an agency you freaking hate. Like, we flew to Spain, and I wanted to hang myself because that agency that we were at was exactly everything I stand against. And I'm sitting here working for these people like, shit, like, you know, I really put my foot in it this time, right? And then that made me come home and say, let me learn about agency culture. That's the worst feeling in the world when you're doing work that you hate. Yeah, man. Because a lot of you in the beginning for the first five years, I'll be dead honest, you're not going to make much money. You're, you're hardly going to cover your bills, right? A creative director at best, you know, started as a copywriter and is making 120 and then you got to pay Uncle Sam, you know, then whatever. You know, an art director has to go up the – you just got to fight your way up, right? So your, your reward is producing cool stuff. That's kind of your payment, right? And then your side projects. So if you land in an agency because you need the money and you're doing stuff you don't like, you're going to hate advertising. But then on the other side, if you land somewhere and you're doing stuff you like, you're going to love advertising, right? You just, you're going to fall in love with the creative, with, with the other side of the job. And, really the most, and the most important thing is getting in through any agency at the time. You know, you want to you wanna try to land inside of an agency because after a year, after two years, you know, you could jump around from agency to the agency, yeah. uh, finding the right fit. You know, uh, maybe the first agency isn't the right fit, but after a while, you start finding other opportunities, uh, you know, which is one of the main reasons why I decided to go freelance. Uh, I get to taste a few different places every so often, you know, Uh, and sometimes in your career, you have that opportunity to be able to do that. Um, Make a lot more money. Freelance. You guys know the difference between freelance and in-house, how they pay you? You guys all, all understand that pretty much? Okay, so uh, you land in an agency, and let's say they put you on, they say uh, Y&R had Coca-Cola, FedEx, and Miller, whatever, I don't know, Coors, Coors Light, Light, right? Coors Light. So he and I were copy art on that, those three projects. They bill the client X, which is usually four times what we're getting paid for, right? And that's how they make their profit. You get it? When you go freelance. Th- that's why they also ask you for hourly. They ask you for hourly. They, they put you down your hours and you put your timesheets in. And that's how they build the client. And that's how they build the client. So if you're getting paid, let's say, $60 an hour, they're billing about $400 an hour, whatever it is, right? And that, that's how they make their money. When you're freelance, it's a daily rate. Like, this is what I pay, you know, this is what I charge, you know, fuck you pay me or don't, right? So as freelance, you can bank. And then what's cool about freedom freelance is the better stuff you produce, the better you are to do, the more they want you, right? And then the more opportunities up up you up. have. So a lot of a lot of people, what they do is they'll they'll create a really cool piece and then they'll go freelance for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then they might go back into a really you know unique agency that they later on landed in. You know, yeah. uh, sometimes that happens, sometimes they don't, or they just decide to stay freelance the whole entire time. You guys really got to start learning agency culture. If, if, that, if your idea is to go to an agency, start learning the culture. Don't land somewhere you don't want to be. It sucks. And then it just makes you look bad all around. So it's, a, it's a small world, the creative world. So let's actually get back to this. So yeah. What's stopping you from actually creating yeah. cool shit, right? right. Who, who's, who's done something here they're truly proud of? What is it? it say again? That's good. Well, that doesn't matter. That, you're proud of it. You're proud. You, you put it on your portfolio. You show it to people. Who else? How many pieces do you have like that? Who else? You see that? That's okay. Every hand should be up right now. I don't care if you're first quarter. Every hand should be up, right? And then if you haven't produced something that you're totally in love with, you need to go back and finish it or go jump off a bridge, right? Because then 
What are you doing? And, and, and as a creative, you're always going to have that problem that you're never fully in love with it. But the idea is that you're at least producing things that you at least appreciate that you've done, right, on your own side. So if you're into painting, you know, you start painting more, right? And you, and you, or you're in the drawing, you draw more. If you're in the film, you film more. But you're actually producing things that you actually care about. Let um, me see really quick. Copywriters, how many have written their own, have you written a piece at all? What, a book, a play? You've written a book. You have it published, you're done? Okay. Any other copywriters, have you guys done anything like that yet? That's important. How important is that to you? Right, so that's what you bring to the table when you go to an agency or anywhere. And don't be afraid, you know, and art director is the same thing. Like, he spends a lot of his time doing... The Me Too, the, the, no, the I'm Listening campaign. What's those? Uh, we'll get to that after. He does all these other campaigns, but that's what gets him work. He does campaigns out of pocket. He did a 24-hour movie out of pocket. I'm Listening campaign, uh, this other campaign. Those are the things that get him paid, but he doesn't do it for the money. He does it just because he has the time, and that's what he cares about, and right? And the reason why is because your favorite word in an agency is going to be the word no. <laughs> The word no is going to be the word that you're going to hear every single day. No, but I'll see what I can do about it. Exactly. That's what I tell you. And it's because the fact is sometimes your idea is just not there maybe. Um, or maybe on the other hand, it's there, but there's no budget. And you have to restructure it. And it takes some time to get through every single filter. So imagine if you're the junior, right? Then you have your art director. Then, or, you know, art director, or copywriter, mid-level team. Then you have your senior team. Then you have your CD, right? If you're in a bigger agency, you have a GCD, right? Then you have your CEO, CCO, CFO, and then guess what? It has to come all the way back down, present it to the account team, present it to the strategies team, and say that it's okay to present the client. Right. And then guess what? Or you do like him and go and, shoot and your and shit and, then, and bring then, it in. Wait a sec, but guess what? Client, what about they go back after all that? Weeks of work, client says... I hate it. Which happens. Which happens. Nutella, Italy. I, I, I was uh, in New York at Ogilvy, and we did a whole entire pitch. Uh, the whole entire creative team was on. It was a brand new pitch. Uh, 350 employees working on it. Uh, we got to the final last pitch team. Uh, we presented to client. Client decided not to buy it at the end. This was two weeks of work. Night and day. A lot of alcohol, but we didn't get through it, and it sucks, but at the end, you're like, you know what, at least we got that far. Um, that's why a personal project is always important, because as a creative, you need to be able to unleash that somewhere else, and that's the type of stuff that later on could get you known, and you might be able to get more work just from those personal projects, and that's the most important thing. How many of you guys understand this process up here right now? Can you guys see that? You strategists, you guys understand this process? Like how a sale, how a customer's acquired and then returns? Yeah. This is important to learn. And, and you guys could Google this stuff. We have our own chart, but you guys could Google this and learn it. The process of acquiring a customer. The, quiet, the process of a customer returning. Or a is, viewer. Or a viewer. Or a viewer, right? Is what is value in the industry. That's what is valuable. That's where, that's where you can show your worth. I got a customer and the customer came back. Can you do that successfully? Yes, you're hired. Bottom line, right? Learn this. There's different ways that you guys can learn this and go about this, but it's always going to bring you back to the same bucket. It's always going to bring you back to the same process. Learn it and learn how to do it, right? The, the experience that the eyeballs go through when you're creating content, what brings you back to the person's page? You get it? If, if, you know, if it's a fitness model, is it her fat ass that brings you back, or is it her abs, is it her smile, right? If she loses too much weight, do you go to another fitness model? If it's, you know... A comedian, if he makes a racy joke, do you stop going to his page and you find out what is it that brings you back? And that's the way you're going to know how to deliver content that brings people back to you or to your customer. What's happening is you're actually falling in love with the brand. Right. That's right? what branding is, guys. So Consistency. Think about the process. You're looking, let's say, what Mark was saying, fitness models, right? You find this fitness model, like, oh, my God, I love her diet, right? You, you get to recognize her brand, and then that brand – develops an experience because that experience that you got, you're like, oh, shit, this is really cool, this is fun, whatever. I'm going to eat what she's eating, right? You, yeah, and then you decide to share it with friends, and then there's some type of satisfaction, and hopefully it goes into a repeat sale.
or a repeat view, and you come back for more repetition of and content. That's branding, and as you can do that consistently, all the time, always stay in the same place. You're gonna become big, famous, whatever you want to call it, or make the person you're working for that way. The moment you become inconsistent, the moment that that second, if I tell you every day, don't eat pizza, don't eat pizza, don't eat pizza, makes you fat, makes you fat. Then that Friday that I'm in that mood and I post that picture of that pie with the Coca-Cola, I lost half my following, right? Because I became inconsistent to who I am. And you guys, you, this group here, this entire room, is one of the most important things you have to learn. With colors, uh, we tried to change the color of FedEx one time and almost got murdered in an agency because we just found something cool for Christmas. It was Christmas, right? And he was inspired and the green was there. And the call came from like, I think FedEx themselves, like shoot those kids, right? <laughs> But then we learned, then we learned why, okay, it's totally against their brand and they'll start losing market share. And now we understand that and we do the same things. If, if you get a brand book from either one of us, the guidelines are so strict that even the size of the font of the copy, even that has to be exact. When you writers write the tone, you, when, who, you writers are gonna start learning how to do tones and how to write into character, right? The moment you get out of character to your audience, they lose interest. It's, it's kind of sad, but it's really true. Now, I wish it wasn't that way, right? Because, you know, the truth is that we are different, people are different, but we do want the consistency as customers. Um, so what makes it unstoppable, really? The one thing that stops us from being us is fear of judgment of not fitting in, of not being perfect. But when you stop being afraid, you start being free. Because you, you can do anything, be anything. You can try your hand, find a new purpose. Be selfish. Discover a passion. Live in the moment. Never miss a thing. You, without compromise, are perfect. You're unstoppable. This is here for two reasons, to show you guys the quality of it and the creativeness, but it's also a message to you guys, because this is actually what we came here to tell you guys. Just being here and sharing and interacting and learning and applying and producing, you have a lot to offer that you guys don't understand when you get out there and st go start looking for work, whether it's freelance, whether you can do your own thing, whether you can start a business, go work for an agency. Understand that, that you are the product. You, you, yourself, each as individuals. If you're gonna go as a team, he's an art director, I'm a copywriter, but we're also individuals and he provides one product and I provide another, or we can provide you a product together, however the hell you want it, how much money you got? That's what it boils down to, right? You guys gotta start looking at it that way. Once you start understanding that, the less, less fear you approach, the less fear you approach with, the better your work is gonna be. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to change a font. Don't be afraid to fight your, your partner over something that you really believe in if you can prove it, if the strategist can give you the data to prove it. You understand? You guys have to do that because, the, like we said in the beginning, the advertising industry has, usually things pivot. When things are changing, they pivot. When something shifts, it's violent. It's very violent. What is happening in advertising, the change, is extremely violent, right? And then it, you guys are the ones that have to keep up. The community doesn't have to keep up. They're there. You guys have to keep up. If not, you're not going to have work. You're going to be out of work. You're going to be doing something else for a living, right? Just so you guys know also, you, you tapped into something really interesting. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, one of the biggest things right now that's happening in agencies is their, their models kind of changing, right? Um, the way that they're actually looking at business is completely changing. Uh, they're... Guys, they don't Ten want campaigns anymore. Who's doing campaigns? Sorry, not to interrupt, but I'm going to add to them. Are you guys still doing campaigns? Like, stop doing campaigns. They don't want campaigns. But, but more important than that, it's, there's a reason behind it bef before that, right? Um, agencies 
started creating more in-house editorial suites, more post-production process, right? Uh, what was happening was clients are getting smarter, clients are creating in-house agencies, right? So you gotta remember something, what is an agency actually? An agency is a middleman. Creatives, it's, they're, we're called creatives, but we don't actually make anything besides ideas. So it's really hard to sell something intangible. That's why agencies are now looking for people that can create a full thing, right? If you can give me something tangible, then you're worth more, right? Because then all of a sudden you can make something out of it. So the biggest thing about it is just if you can make something tangible out of it, then you have another asset to your toolbox. How many art directors have their own camera equipment? Lighting. Okay. The works, right? That you gotta be prepared, right? You Copywriters, what 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 do you sell to what are you using to write? What what programs? You guys have to be prepared. Can you write a script? Can you storyboard it? All this stuff. If you guys could come out of here and produce almost finished work, semi finished work, you're a gold mine. If you can't a lot of times this will might happen too. They may say, Okay, look, listen, we don't have the whole entire budget to go ahead and produce this, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to go produce this right now. But look, we'll give you a thousand. Let's just throw a number. We'll give you a thousand. Go produce it. Right? And that oh, might that, that might actually happen, right? So you have to be able to execute it to a, 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 a spec piece and then be able to execute it further. Okay. What else we got? Let's actually go through this. We already spoke about we this. We spoke about this, brand building. All right, so strategists, I don't know how you guys do it. Um, a communications architecture, if you guys look here, when you produce a piece of content, it should fall into one of these buckets, right? If it doesn't fulfill all of these needs, it is not a good piece of content. It's just not, right? Because then you're not in the brand. You're not producing and saying, you're not, you're not getting one of the goals accomplished, right? You guys are learning to build these things. Your strategist to learn to build it, give it to you, whatever the format is. When you produce a piece of content, does it cover all the points that we need covered? Is it creative, you know, whatever it is, right? This is extremely important to, uh, how do I say, uh, not suck, basically. To not suck at what you do, okay? Because then th this is the difference between you and a non-professional. You understand? Like somebody can take a beautiful picture, but a good photographer will take a beautiful picture that actually tells a story. You get it? And there's a difference there, right? And then the value comes into the one that tells a story compared to the one that's just a beautiful picture. With writers, you can write an amazing story, right? Can the story be continued? You get it? Can the, the, does the story have legs? If I take X character route, does the story fall apart? That's what you gotta tell yourself as a writer. You get it? And then when you guys work together, those two things have to jive, okay? Um, oh, this is fun. This is the, one of the first, this was in, this is before I even came to school, guys. And I, I wrote this in a gym with the owner of an agency who graduated school, a guy named, if you guys ever had the chance to meet a man named Salvador Veloso, He's probably the most creative man in advertising, and many people will tell you. We did, a, we did a set. He gave me the strategy. We read it. He told me the budget, and this happened in one day. The idea came out in one day during a chess workout, so you guys see how creativeness can happen. Sophie. Hola. Danny. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. ¿Cuánto tiempo? Estás genial. Qué lindo. Veo que a ti también te va muy bien. No me quejo. Hola. Buenas. Mi tío. Mucho gusto. Bueno, súper verte. Igual, igual. <risa> Llámame. Sí, este modelo viene con motor V6. Me la llevo. Buena decisión. Sobrino. Un auto que te acompaña exactamente a donde quieres llegar. So, th this is creative, guys, when it's led by a professional. This man verbally briefed me, was picking my brain, and this came out of it because he's so good at what he does. He had the strategy in his head, he had the budget in his head, Everything, the ideas that were coming out at first, like, no, we don't have the money for that. No, we have the money. If you guys really pay attention, it's a very inexpensive video. It's a very inexpensive shot, right? It wasn't, 
right? But it hit the mark. It hit all of his marks. So when you, when you guys learn to do this, something like this, this is old, right? it's over 10 years old, right? When you guys can produce something that 10 years later still gets a cool reaction, you succeeded. Whether people see it or not, right? I don't even have this on my portfolio. Like, I, I, you know, I'm showing it to you guys. He's seen it. A couple people have seen it. When you guys do things like this, you're winning, right? If you need half a million dollars to produce a job, you're not winning, right? When you need, you know, 10 writers to do, get something right, you're not winning. You got to be able to be self-sufficient independently, right? Or as a group or as one. And the two biggest things to it, one, there's a story, and two, there's emotion. Every campaign, every project you have needs to have some type of story. Yeah. yeah you guys, you guys got to get really big into storytelling. Like, I, I don't know, I haven't seen, I, I haven't been keeping up with what's going on in the school, but when we were here, it was almost all about storytelling, like to the point that, that, that people would stand on the stage and act out their stuff for the, for the groups, and we'd critique and make fun of each other. But that pushed, right? I don't know how you guys here behave with each other, but, you know, um, I suggest doing that, interact with each other more. Um, what else? I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we're done, guys. I don't know if we bored you to death. This is my first time doing this. Anybody, any questions? How'd you guys like the presentation? Yeah? Any, any questions? Questions. You should have questions. If you don't have questions, we failed. He's stretching. Give me a question. You were talking about how, like, in the last piece, um, the last ad that was shown, the guy had the budget already in his head, the strategy already in his yeah. head. Um, how, have you guys found, like, a way to, like, already, like, predetermine what, what the budget's going to be? Because I don't know anything about that. Yeah? Okay. Ahead, That's all he talks about is money. <laughs> <laughs> um... It all comes down towards the production, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to understand how many days it's going to take to shoot something, right? And every single day that you take to shoot something is obviously going to cost more, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it pretty much comes down to the, t the, the team that you need in order to develop this idea, right? And you pretty much create a production bid, right? So an Excel sheet, right? Okay. Um, I need a DP that has a camera kit, right? Uh, is going to cost me X, Y, Z. And then you just pretty much come up with an Excel sheet that has all this information of exactly what you're looking for and then multiply that just by the numbers of days. And then you'll be able to get that number and be able to put it down. Now, you have to build up your, your resources of people. Exactly. You know, you probably the same thing to understand. The school provides incredible networking events because I met, I met a writer here at the school that still gives me work to this day and has introduced me to other writers that I've used. You have to build up your Rolodex, like, like you got to build up your arsenal. When you have, when he says DP, a director of photography, you got some high-end ones and some low-end ones, right? Depending on what you need, you got to have that ready. Hey, how much you charge? What's your day rate, right? Do you give me a discount if I go, you know, give you X amount of days? And you have to have that as 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 a creative, as a professional, right? Uh, it's uh, gonna grow over ex time. Exactly, as a professional, you need to have that in order to be able to execute things. <laughs> did I answer your question? Yeah, that did. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for coming out. Um, I got a couple questions. First one, who won that fist fight? I caught him. He actually caught me with a... Uh, well, you guys, I'm a UFC coach. <laughs> I, I don't hit people anymore. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but I caught him. I actually caught him in Spain. Caught him with a little knife right over here. <laughs> I actually caught him. It okay. gets that intense. If you guys aren't fighting... I caught, I caught him back, though. 